Hello, and welcome to episode two of, uh, I don't, I, I'm, I'm going to call this some, look, uh, Griffin, uh-huh. I decided I was going to do your show real quick and thank you. Is this so, all the title? Is that yeah. all the title? Griffin, I decided title. I was going to do your show real quick. Yeah. That, You're welcome. It's a little, it's a little word. It's a little word. Like, yeah. I'm trying to do, like, a panic at the disco level title oh, situation, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know? <laughs> All right. I write Taz, not tragedies. <laughs> it's actually pretty good. Thank you. Welcome to the Adventure Zone. Uh, colon, I didn't think of a one in in alphabetical order. I kind of did. We're going to call it imbalance. Yeah, there you Ooh. go. That's really yeah. good. Yeah, it's good. All right. That'll do. Thanks. Got it in one, except it was like 20 minutes of talking. Let's <laughs> see if they edit it down. We'll fix it in post. We'll fix it in post. We'll in fix post. it in post. Gentlemen, the past is not pristine, and the present is currently at risk. Merle, Magnus, Taco, and Davenport, your heroes across realities, retired. Some of you a little listless after lifetimes of adventure. But a new threat has surfaced. A creature known as the Time Drake has arrived on the heels of a Herald of Istis. The creature, still unknown to you all, has sent waves of burning soldiers to attack a very lovely dinner party at Taco's house. And that's where you find yourself about to engage in battle once again. So, we've rolled initiative. Magnus, would you like to rush him? Uh, well, first, first I'm going to talk, uh, speaking yeah. of reaction. All right, Taco, you know how this goes. Uh, I'm about to rush in. Time to activate whatever uh, defenses you've built into your house. Yeah, let me, hold on. Yeah, let me flip the trap switch. Boop! And he just points his finger at a, piece of the wall and says boop <laughs> okay uh, so all right all right no they've, they've shut down or we're never installed properly i'm going to talk about <laughs> the guy i had i got a guy you got a trap guy yeah nice can i, I meet him i'd love to meet your trap guy because i've yeah i'm my i'm my own trap guy I take out I take out some micro machines and scatter them around the floor and uh, start heating up the doorknob. Mm, that's good. I'm good, so yeah, glad good. that our brand has now made a Home Alone <laughs> reference. Finally, one of our shows includes yeah, no. a nod to the popular thriller Home Alone. Right. It's a think, deep cut, but I'll allow it. Yeah. Uh, I think Magnus. Yeah, you know what? I think Magnus has been itching for a fight. Uh, he is going to. <laughs> Go charging through and jump through a window. Beautiful. Uh, I will. It's, simply, so un- it's so unnecessary. It's so yeah. unnecessary. Yeah, I'm going to repaint the picture one more time, uh, not to dissuade you from jumping through the window, but just to remind you of what you're facing off against and yep. the open yep. door I definitely mentioned. Yeah, no, before. no, no. Goes through the yeah. window. Okay, cool, yep. cool, cool. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, yep. All right. Well, uh, listen, he's got a lot of pent up stupidity <laughs> going on. <laughs> you it's gotta time. let it off gas yeah, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah, fair. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to make you roll for it. You're very good at jumping through windows. Uh, you do a big crash through. Uh, you land amazingly three point stance, look up like Black Widow, and you see in front of you uh, a score somewhere between 20 and 24 of these like dark, sort of burning humanoid figures that look like they're like beginning to burn away at the edges, like uh, like the corners of paper that have been lit aflame. And then the moment you crash through the window, their eyes like kind of turn to you and they start to pick up speed and yeah. they're now closing the like hundred yard distance between you. And Magda smiles and draws the flaming, raging, poisoning <laughs> sort of death. Uh, um, yeah. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he uh, grabs Chance Lance. I'm going to say, and who's who? who which uh, he's going to aim call, for? Sorry, did you call it the flaming raging poison sort of death? Because it's so like R.I.P. your mentions forever. Your mentions. Yeah. Are <laughs> oh, did I say of death? Yeah, well. You said of death. R.I.P. your mentions. We'll fix it in post. Yeah. Also, um, apparently, it's the flaming poisoning raging sort of doom. No. And I had to look that up. No, it's the flaming that raging poisoning raging. sort of doom. No, it's poisonings before raging. Man, Whoa. Uh, yeah, this is bare- I'm here to okay. nerd check you. 
Okay. I've been here for an hour, and okay. I know your game better. Flaming, than you. poisoning, raging sword of doom. No, that I hate is that. exactly correct. Yeah. Dang. It doesn't sound good to say. <laughs> it feels bad in the mouth. Flaming, raging, po- okay. We can wreck on it. We can yeah. all. We can wreck on it. Okay. I draw the chance lance. Okay. Uh, and I throw it at the baddest looking uh warrior in the ranks. Okay, I love that. Uh, you see this like massive Goliath sort of like picking up a little bit of uh steam and creating a little bit of a gap between the rest of the hordes. Go ahead and make an attack roll for me. Oh, we're doing it. We're doing a fight. Uh, well, it's 15. A 15 does not hit. This is a level 17 uh, encounter. But I'm going to use, I know I have something that lets me use it. Don't I'm, forget, I gave all of you a, a round of uh, inspiration. Oh, so right, you get right, a free right. reroll of our mini, at some point. Mini failures. Because y'all like didn't get the plot in the first episode. <laughs> yeah. <roll> dog shit. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm going to use precision attack, which I knew I had. Love uh, that. To use one of my uh, superiority dice. God, I'm so out of practice. What are my superiority dice? What do I get to roll? Okay, so add to that a five. So a 20. Yes. A dirty 20. Dirty 20 okay. absolutely hits. Uh, and for damage... A D12 plus five, so that's 12 points of damage. Ooh, lovely. Uh, And then I am going to recall it uh, and throw it again. Nice. I attack three times uh, in a turn. There we go. A 12 plus 11. Absolutely hits. Um, So as you roll the damage, uh, why don't you break off from me? I love giving this to other DMs. Uh, You tell me what that looks like. Uh, So what it is is uh, he throws the lance, hits the guy the first time in the shoulder, recalls it. He throws it the second time and it misses. And then when he recalls it, it comes flying back and hits his other shoulder. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, because this guy kind of looks up at you with these like empty socket eyes as you miss the second time and gives you like this big grin and starts laughing. And then his entire right like arm at the shoulder gets blasted off his body as the chance lance comes back through him on the hit. Uh, and on that second, that third, yeah, second hit, I'm going to use disarming attack. Ooh. Um, I'm when you hit with the weapon attack, you just uh, expend one superiority die and add it to the damage and disarm the target if it fails a strength saving throw. Let me do the strength save. With a natural five on the dice, I don't think that's going to do it. No, unless it has a plus 14. It does not. It does not. And I love that I already said you took its arm off. So you literally yeah. disarmed my boy. Beautiful. Okay, is there anything else you want to do with your turn? She's going to brace for whatever's coming. one better. Give me a perception check. I'm going to force okay. you to do a bonus action. Please be. Okay. Please perceive your surroundings, my friend. Uh, 13. Okay. Uh, with a 13, as you sort of brace and hunker down, you feel your brain like moving back into that flow state of like battle mastery when everything actually calms down and gets slow and you're able to like see the like waves of movement as a battle builds. With a 13, you see that like off in the distance, about another 50 yards behind where all like the main group of uh, these burners are running in. You see like a shimmering, like a mirage at the edge of like an extremely hot beach or desert. Okay, <laughs> I, I'm gonna take cunning action and I am going to dash back into the house. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and you are now back. Do you jump through a different window or just go through the open door? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I come back through the other window. Yeah, respect. All right. Uh, and Kravitz. for a penny, and for a pound, yeah. Kravitz looks like he wants to fucking murk you for that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, I for- I'll I'll fix it later. There's a lot of bad guys outside, and like a mirage thing. Davenport, you're up. Oh boy, uh, I I guess I'm seeing the same thing that Magnus just saw, uh, with with regards to the literal army of uh yes. the damned outside. Okay, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to sort of shore up our defenses. Uh, I'm going to poke my uh, my head out one of the shattered windows that Magnus just made. And uh, a few little sort of silvery discs pop out of my hand and sort of form a line in front of uh, the, the house here. And I cast a wall of force and ten 
10 foot by 10 foot panels uh, form an enormous uh, impenetrable wall uh, in, in front of the uh, in front of the house here. I hate you for that. That's very good. Okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, I'm also going to, uh, with a, my bonus action, uh, press a button on my on my bicep here, and uh, a little shield uh, appears around my guardian armor, uh, giving me 17 temporary hit points. Oh, let's go. That. Beautiful. And okay. That'll that'll be it. Um, same thing. Why don't you give me a perception check? You like as it. you set this spell up and you're kind of looking out through it because your wall of force is invisible. Right. You have like kind of a safe view of um, what's going on outside. That's a 17 plus 7, 24. Dang. Okay, with a 24, uh, I will ask you, is there anything interesting Davenport would be looking for as this fight like begins to like go into full swing? Full like fully he's I think he's looking for the hunger like yeah. it, because it's hard for him to kind of sh- shake shake the habit I guess uh, yeah. and it is the most sort of destructive thing that he is he has uh, witnessed before so yeah he's he's he, I mean he's looking for eyes in the sky and uh, swirling sort of uh, black clouds and all that all that jazz yeah Davenport uh, as your eyes kind of do that unfocus uh, we get that like vertigo pan of extraordinarily long vision as you're looking out to see something massive and terrible that will like sort of eclipse the group you're waiting for that like doom sign but all you get is that you see that shimmer on the horizon that Magnus mentioned but you see something a little past it something that seems to hover over top of the shimmer that almost has form, even though it doesn't have, like, color or mass. It looks almost... It's huge. Dragon-like. But not... But it's not the hunger. But there is something big and terrifying on the horizon. I'm glad you you just made eye contact with it. Yeah. Yeah, up until terrifying, I was like, maybe it's nice. Maybe it's cool. Maybe it's super chill. Yeah. Uh, okay. I heard you guys had mutton. <laughs> Love it. Amazing. Okay, perfect. Uh, so then with that, my first round of bad boys are going to come in and slam themselves against the wall of force. Cool. This is a very obnoxious spell. Thank you. <laughs> um, so you see as a dozen of these like burning humanoids like begin to throw themselves against against uh this invisible wall and claw at it and it's not until you see two of them kind of push themselves back and back off and you see them beginning to cast like a very big spell it's going to take uh the entire round to cast but it looks like they've gotten the shape of what this is and they're going to bring it down but not yet and the rest are just sort of skittering across it uh helplessly next up is taco uh question abria do you feel like i got all my shit like would i have any reason to have all my shit on me you're in your house like i'm in my house you got all your shit but i feel like yeah just on me okay cool look i wouldn't take anything from you i would only take away important items from like people i don't like (laughs) Uh, i'm trying to come up with i was about to throw the kreb star but i don't actually know that it's it was ever rated for combat. (laughs) i don't know i don't think it had combat stats i'm looking through my it's also worth noting the wall of force nothing can physically pass through it oh yes we're at hey. a delightful little impasse for a section. Well, uh, I will say uh, the way the way you built it. Do you think Griffin it would completely surround the house or just no? Sort of so the, front? the options with all forces, you can make yeah. a ten foot radius like dome, which you, yeah. like it was it was it went against my every instinct to not include a dome in this story, <laughs> but that's not big enough. So no, it is just a one hundred foot invisible flat wall. Cool. Um, so you know. Okay. I was main, mainly trying to get some some dummies to smash into it, which they, they did. happily did. Yeah. So you can go around the back and kind of circumnavigate or try to yeet stuff up and over the wall. It's 100 feet up also, so that would be Look, quite a yeet. I don't know how hard people can quite throw things. 
It's D and D. What's your what's your what's your yeet modifier? <laughs> it's uh, you like know a what? Plus three. Yeah. I have assessed the situation, and where I'm going to go at is tacos good in here. <laughs> I'm going to prepare, yes. I will prepare mm. a crossbow attack in case any of them get through. So I'm ready with a crossbow attack. Amazing. Uh, sort of above the game question, have have Taco and Kravitz had a discussion about Taco's uh, sort of turning well, away a, from magic? A Bria was more of a bet. <laughs> <laughs> If, if he did the dishes with magic and Kravitz and he got into a fight about it and he, Kravitz bet him he couldn't go a whole year without doing magic. So he's like month three of it and he does this not want to fuck it up at this point and he refuses to lose the bet. What's I, on the line? What? Back What's rub, baby. <laughs> what? One stone cold back rub. One he's not fucking rub. losing. Let's go. With mage hand. Oh my god. No? Kravitz well, is looking at you right now as you level the crossbow like you're gonna do it. One shot, one kill, baby. Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> hey, quick, real quick cue though. Mm-hmm. It's the trigger. That's the <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, babe. That's the trigger. Good luck. Hey, just to clarify, just to agree, this still counts, right? Yes, I, it counts. But you you're going to do magic by the end of it. Like, look no, 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 no. I got the crossbow. This is the only magic I need. Why? Arrow spells. Wow. The way our forefathers cast them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, I'm going to take the normies out real quick. And you just see Kravitz gets up and, like, boosts Susan and just walks out the back door. Susan just lets it happen. I don't know why she's being carried like a puppy. I've Well, she's drunk. Yeah, she's drunk, and I've lost the thread of why she's still in this scene. <laughs> so... <laughs> Uh, that happens. Tacos or anything else you want to do? Are you okay? So, would you like a specific trigger for your crossbow attack? Uh, I think if if they well, okay, if they get into like somehow get around through over the wall, perfect to where I would be in range. Okay. If they enter crossbow range. Yeah, I mean, is Love is should yeah. Okay, I just want to make you make sure you and feel I like need, you're not burning. I mean, a little hand holding on making a range attack for the first <laughs> yeah. time in my actual life. As another caster, who could say how to do manual fighting like a peasant? I don't know. We'll figure it out. Uh, okay. Uh, Merle. You Actually, hold on. Uh, Taco, give me a perception check. We're giving one for everyone as you kind of line up and start. Well, that's a, let's see. Six plus seven, 13. Okay. A 13 is still pretty good. So uh, what does taco care most about in this moment as he's sort of looking out and waiting for his moment to strike uh what he cares most about is uh property damage number one yes his boyfriend's death the others have gone through what they've gone through with him they've done some really wild stuff currently property damage is the number one thing because he will have to physically like one, Magnus will be over trying to repair stuff. Very much a bummer. Trying won't be able to. to use. Won't be able to use ma- magic to repair things. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to like, you know, you have to like call a guy, and you're gonna have to find a guy to come out and yeah, the plumbing, uh, all that that's stuff. Okay. Like that's the main concern. Yeah, Property as your damage. as your mind sort of drifts to uh, everything that will happen past this, you sort of notice as like the second wave of these uh, burning enemies seem to splinter off and they don't throw themselves against the wall the way that first dozen did. They are moving around the wall. You can kind of see them moving around the edge, trying to make their way around and back to bust out the back of your house. So you see that coming down the line. Merle, you're up. Okay, Merle um, climbs up on the table. Who is in the room? Uh, right now, it's the four of you and uh, Lucretia. And the messenger? And the messenger, Kuo. Sorry, my garage is freaked out, and it scared me. <laughs> okay, Merle climbs up on the, uh, on the table, stands up on the table, kind of sways a little bit. He's got the extreme teen Bible open in one hand and that bottle of wine with just a little bit left in it. There's not very much of the buttery Chardonnay left in it. I hate to see it. 
and he runs around the room and spritzes. Hey, that was Foley. Spritzes everybody and one at a time and casts Bless. Amazing. Uh, so, Bless, are you hitting four people with Bless? Yes. Hitting four Who's people four? with Bless. Uh, let's, well, actually, at higher levels, when you cast this spell, using a spell slot of second level or higher, you can target the additional creature for each slot level but first. So I could I could cast it on everybody, right? Are you trying to get everybody? Do you think the Holy Messenger needs bless? Yeah, we won't bless the Messenger. So I blessed the four of us say. and Lucretia. Okay. Uh, Kuo just kind of gives you a look like... That, that's fine. Uh, my feelings aren't. I ran out of wine. Sorry. <laughs> good, good, and good. kind of looks at the empty bottle and then, oh, oh watches you drink it. Okay. That's fair. Does he still have the adamantium spanner? You know? Yeah, I don't know why he wouldn't. Unstraps the spanner and gets ready to kick some ass. Love it. Okay. So you uh, line that up. Go ahead and give me. Give me a perception check or a nature check. I'll go with nature. Sweet. That's a plus seven. Love that. That makes sense. And that would be 20 plus seven. So a, nat <gasps> you got a, a natural, natural 20? 20? A, nat a 20 natural 20. And a seven. Oh, so a natural 20. Time to give the entire uh -huh. game That's away, I guess. Here we go. We win! So, <laughs> you do it, it's over. This has been so lovely, thank you. Uh, so Merle, something happens in this moment as uh, you finish blessing your friends and the like the array of magic that you've sent out, you are now sort of standing at the center of a sigil that you've drawn of protection and nature. And Kuo, who was vaguely annoyed that you didn't include them in the bless, is fine. And you see them move into like a very specific position. And with that, something pulses between the two of you as a connection that feels and smells and almost tastes like the green wilds that you associate with your god Pan are summoned into this place. And Kuo speaks directly into your mind. It says, oh, oh, this is new. Uh, Merle, are you doing this or am I? What is, are we having a moment right now? Uh, yeah, is this a chemistry thing? Like, I, I mean, are we connecting, I, connecting? I mean, we could be, I don't know. I'm kind of up for whatever. Wait, wait my, my lips, my lips check, aren't moving. Check, please. I want <laughs> off the call. I want out. <laughs> Le décision, s'il vous plaît. <laughs> my, li um, my lips aren't moving, and we're talking. This is cool. Well, I'm happy to keep this up. And if you need anything. Sure, yeah. Uh, I no, I think I'll serve you. Wow. Okay. And you, you feel this Another, sense yeah. of genuflection. Like, even though Kuo doesn't move in this moment, they sort of turn and address you and sort of bow to you. Like, something has happened in this moment where they are... Rec it's a game-recognizing game kind of thing, and you have now sort of, like, created a bond between the two of you. Kuo can act as an ally and assist you with things on your turn. Whoa. So just, you can describe okay. what that is. Like, don't worry about the action economy of it. Well, you don't have to get, like, in the weeds on it. Awesome. And something I love important it. has just happened. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Is there anything else you would like to do, Merle? Is there any. Um, could I send them out for more wine? No, 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 no. I'm good. I'm good. Let's get ready to kick ass. <laughs> okay. And you sort of like spin your adamant spanner in your hands and uh, wait for what's to come. Uh, I've, been I've been informed via messenger that you did give up the adamant spanner during the suffering game. Uh, I forgot. So now you've got just a, a big. A stick or a rake or something. Or just a regular spanner that you I, bought. I think he, here's here's my headcanon, is that he made another one and covered it in foil for pictures. Yeah. Because people are always like, can yes. I see this spanner? Where's this okay. Spanner? This spanner? Right. And I call him the spanner. Adam Ant Spanner. There yes. you go. <laughs> Perfect. And it's Amazing. magic. Do you say it's tragic? 
magic. magic. Okay, magic. I heard tragic, and that was funny. Or something about like that in my brain. It will end up being tragic, I'm sure. <laughs> Okay, uh, so the second round of burners, uh, you all see now that they have sort of disappeared and they are slowly circumnavigating the house. It's going to take them a lot of time to move, even with their dash. But now only half of that full force is in front of the wall of force, trying to break it down as the spell is about to go off. And uh, next up would be Kuo. So Merle, what would you like this uh, like fey creature to do to assist you all? Um, we still don't know a whole bunch about the who's attacking us, do we? I yeah. would say zero. Yeah. I would say we know absolutely you zero. You know literally nothing. I think I think he would ask what they know about these creatures. Yeah. So the moment you sort of send out this like impulse for like information, what is this? You feel just a wall of like words and ideas and like mental images shoot into your head it begins with like deep within the fey wild this once again very wild very green place there are a group of incredibly powerful beings called the untethered that are these fey monsters that are unconstrained by linear space-time and they sort of lie in wait in that realm where time doesn't have to make that much sense and one of them a being known as the time drake the slow burn but its true name is nicaranox that looks kind of like a komodo dragon with an extra set of arms but huge uh got wind of the things that you did on the day of story and song smelt the bonds that you forged like spiders at the center of a web that reached across all realities, sensed all the energy of that, and broke from its constraints, uh, its prison within the Fey Realm, to make one big attempt to find your, the four of you, to find your weak point, to sever your bonds to the world, even if that means undoing the victories that you've had across your lives because that's enough energy for it to sustain itself. So uh, what you understand, Merle, very cl like quickly in this rush of images is that this is a very powerful creature's one shot at survival, and it has to find a point in your timeline to kill you in order to, ha like, to generate enough power to keep itself alive. And these are its little baddies that it brought with it. <laughs> so, so, Coolio, is it? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Yeah, Coolio. I'm going to need you to text that to me. <laughs> what a good sport. <laughs> what? Was, was, was Kuo so charmed by this incredible nature roll? <laughs> yeah. What a roll. Yeah. Was. What a roll. You got to honor roll. the dice because that makes no fucking sense. Can you email that to me or text it to me? Because I don't know if I'll remember all that. <laughs> How about this? I, I, Merle tells everybody what. What you just told them. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so information has been given. Uh, do you want Kuo to assist you at all in the fight or just hang back and protect the house? Um, stay near to me because I just blessed everybody else. So, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I might need more protection because as a true cleric, I have put everybody else's welfare ahead of my own. Mm. Mm -hmm. And even through this, like, incredible bond, you hear a, a belabored sigh <laughs> as Kuo takes up a position uh, of defense behind you. What does is, what is Bless do, Dad? Oh, I'm glad you asked me that, Travis. Bless, bless, you bless up to three creatures of your choice, in this case four, within range of five. Whenever a target makes an attack roll or a saving throw before the spell ends, the target can roll a D4 and add the number rolled to the attack roll or saving throw. Excellent. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Thank you. Okay, so we're back up to the top. Magnus, you're up. Um, so Magnus is going to rush out the back door. Mm -hmm. Or are there back windows? <laughs> of course there are. Yeah. Okay, Magnus goes cannonballing through one of the windows. Yes. And yelling, no time for doors. <laughs> um, are there any trees around? Uh, you know, I'm going to leave that as a question for Taco. Where is this beautiful home of yours dang it's just sort of floating in oblivion in my head <laughs> oh no um 
It's like, I think it's like on a, I feel like seaside town in a, by a cliff, like uh picturesque, you know, real pretty. And um, yeah, that's about it. Are there any trees? Trees. You want trees? You got like, trees, baby. Like, yeah, some pine <laughs> there's trees. There's some trees over there. Then over there, there's an ocean. And then there's a desert <laughs> behind. <laughs> so it's like kind of like whatever kind of environment you want to envision. It's like, it's like got that nearby. It's a prime locale, except for the current moment when it is being attacked by uh, <laughs> the slow burn. <laughs> All right. Uh, Magnus wants to line up and see if uh, he can line up a tree with some baddies coming and he's gonna rail split that tree down they're more like they're like not they're pretty small trees <laughs> why would you do this to me <laughs> like I just want you to feel like it's like it's not not like a, th a thick lush it's more like you know they're How wispier tall? it's like a chaparral seven, situation like a chaparral it's like mm. seven seven feet they're why, is this because I smashed through your windows mm. This, this is just what the world is. This is the third Justin, one. Justin didn't uh, decide this, Travis. This listen, is just what I've, got, a, I've got a lot of sketches here of my yeah. home <laughs> that I've known about for it's a long time. It's just that in the me. entirety of Taz Balance, I don't think Magnus ever fell the tree with Rail Splitter the entire time. A thing that I was so anxious to do. Yeah. I mean, you could fell these for sure. It's just not going to have a big impact. Yeah. Okay. Well, then rather than fell a tree, uh, Magnus is going to uh, charge at... A bad person. Yeah. I'll say that there's a couple coming around, like, the far edge of this incredibly long uh, encounter-busting wall that's been thrown up. He's going to charge at them uh, with rail splitter drawn. Yes. And in a straight line, immediately before taking this bonus, you either gain a plus five bonus to the attack's damage roll or push that target up to ten feet away from you. Uh, how close are they to the wall of force coming around it? Uh, they're probably only like 15 feet. Like they skirted the wall very closely to try to. Excellent. Get excellent. Excellent. Yeah. So he's going to rush at them then with Phantom Fist. Then. Uh, and he is going to punch the one closest to him. Do a hit. With a hit. Uh, so that's plus 11. Yes. Oh, that's a nat 20. So that's 31. Woo! Amazing. Yeah, that's going to barely hit. Good. Uh, and so the damage there is 2d4 plus 5. We're going to be cute about crits, because uh, totaling damage at this high level of d d is actually incredibly boring. You yeah. crit, so just tell me how you destroy, like, this sort okay. of, like, burning elven figure. So as he comes running in, he has the char charger maneuver to push them 10 feet back. But as he hits, Phantom Fist also fires off. So that glowing fist lifts them off the ground and blows them back into that wall of force. And they hit that and uh, disintegrate against the wall of force. On Amazing. Uh, uh, you, you see them like hit and sort of shatter against the wall of force. And then you see the very edges of the wall of force begin to catch fire. Oh, no. And at the oh, very, no. very edges, the wall of force is beginning to burn away. Cool. Um, Magnus thinks that's great. Uh, he then uh, draws Phantom Fist two-handed, or sorry, Rail Splitter two-handed and swings at the next closest one. Using Phantom Fist two-handed is an interesting concept. I know. I'm very excited. It's be like Just this. Like, your... <laughs> uh, it's a normal punch. That was a nat one with oh, Rail no. Splitter. Yeah. Don't you oh, have absolutely. advantage? What? Not. Oh, wait. Do I have advantage? Oh, I have that inspiration, right? I'm going to use the inspiration. Yeah, use the inspiration. Is that Sorry. from the bless? Oh, no, don't forget, you're supposed to be adding a d4 to your attack rolls also. Yeah. Well, yeah, but I just disintegrated that guy last time, so. Yeah, it, I mean, that's fair. Uh, don't so worry. Keep using it until I figure out how to knock go. the bless off of Merle. 28 total. Hits. Uh, Roll your second attack, too. And then... That's the nat... 20 again. You're fucking kidding Amazing. me. Amazing. No. This is okay. a, these, this is on the computer. These are real <laughs> ass rolls. Yeah. I love this. Go ahead and just describe for me how you absolutely like destroy this like burning dark blue uh, dragonborn. Uh, so he comes in with that first hit 
um, and hits it real solid. I'm going to say buries it in the ribs, like in the ribs. And then uh, with his strength, lifts it up like in the ribs and pushes down again. So he chops all the way through. Amazing. So you chop through a guy? Mm hmm. <laughs> That's horrifying. Whoa, he's a dad. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Make sure his kid falls out of his pocket. <laughs> and then Magnus tosses the picture, too. <laughs> yes, the kids are all burning and weird also. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> okay, Magnus, I do need something for you from you. Let's call this... I don't want it to be a con save, because I know that's good. Fuck it. Give me a constitution saving throw. Constitution saving throw? As you chop well, this boy in half. That's a four, but I'm going to use Indomitable to roll that again. Okay. Because that would only be a 13. and I don't, Oh, that's a 10. Great. Uh, a 19 total. Wait, you, can I use Bless on saving throws? Yeah, you can. <laughs> okay. That's a D4? I mean, it's fine, and I'm happy you did it. Or yeah, is it just a D4. add four? It's a D4. Okay. Yeah, it's a three. So 22 total. Oh, man, the DC was 20. You're very, very welcome for Merle doing a good job. Thanks, Uh, Merle. (laughs) You're welcome. As you split this bad boy in half, it kicks up embers like a dying fire. And you see one of them alights on, like, the sort of cuff of your shirt and begins to hit and burn, too. And you quickly, like, tear off and, like, get rid of that piece of your shirt, realizing that, like, if this burning on these bad boys touches you all, you will begin to be consumed by it too. Okay. Fuck. Okay. Anything else with your uh, bonus action? I am then going to dash back to the house. I'm just going to keep that going. You know what I mean? Like rush out, hit, get back. He's not as young as he used to be. He's not a fool. He's not going to be out there by himself. I'm not. An, I'm not an idiot anymore. I'm. I'm a wise old man now. Of I what? Thirty nine. I don't know. How old is Magnus? <laughs> <laughs> when you go through these windows, are you breaking them or are you opening oh, them? Oh, yeah. First? No, I'm slash right through. I come back through another window. Yeah, that's this four time. now. I'm, after yeah, Taco I'm mentioned, after Taco mentioned, he was more worried about his material goods than us. He should have had big trees to protect his windows, I guess. <laughs> if he had had some big trees, the windows would have been safer <laughs> in a storm or whatever. Amazing. Okay, Davenport, you're up. So a good number of these uh, slow burners are still, like, pressed up against the wall of force trying to break through, right? Yes. About, like, how many of them? If I were to ask. Ten? Oh, okay. I uh, click my heels together, activating my boots of speed, uh, which doubles my walking speed. Yeah. So I can get all the way around the wall of force just right on the other side of it. So I'm sort of lined up with all the bad guys. Mm-hmm. And then, like, uh, I reach into my sort of backpack, my Jansport, and a little Tesla coil kind of comes out on my shoulder. And I cast Lightning Bolt in a straight line right down the group of of, uh, of burners. Yeah. So everyone in that uh, line needs to make a dexterity saving throw. I'm casting this as a fourth level spell. Of course you are. Oh, God. Okay, one made it. The one at the very end just put like, just nine buddies in front of him. Nice. Oh, it was no. literally just one guy in the middle who was like, what's happening? And then just takes one five he foot step He sneezed at the back. right moment. Yeah. <laughs> He's allergic to walls of force and just backs up enough. And the other nine are going to catch the full smoke of this. Wow. That's a lot of... Wow. Yeah, that's a fucking lot of fours and fives. That's a forty-one to everybody who failed, and half that to the got the one individual one who managed million. to dip out of the way takes twenty. Cool. Cool. Uh, forty-one. Yes, and it's everything in a one hundred foot, five foot wide line, uh, as a just arcing blue bolt of electricity just. Cuts hey, uh, go ahead and break some more off because that's enough to kill all nine of those. Okay. Uh, what do you mean break some more? Like, yeah, like if you wanted to add a little more dazzle to it. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's just, you. it's like fireworks. They just... <laughs> 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 Did it get the one that managed to back up or is he... Uh, no, the one that backed up is just screaming because it's still alive and watch so many people got <laughs> just get so melted down. So not screaming in pain. No. Screaming in like terror. 
Oh, it's a little of both. It's mostly mortal fear. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, the two that were casting the like spell get temporary. <laughs> like they pause for just a second and look over at the screamer and then over at you and kind of clock you. Yeah. Okay. That's a pretty good. That's a pretty good action. Anything for your bonus action, Daph? Um, is is this shape that I saw earlier? Is it getting closer? Is it moving at all? What's the What's the? I want to keep an eye on it now that I'm sort of exposed because yeah. I don't want to get touched. Now you're on this side of it. Uh, there's only like you in the front of this house. There's only three burners in front of you. Uh, the rest have been uh, m- moving around to the back of the home. And you see out in the distance, once again, 50 yards away, that shimmering heat mirage. And then a shimmering mirage on top of it. It's just prowling back and forth and watching. And you see that when you kind of look up to regard it, it sort of turns its head to regard you back. I don't like that. Um, I don't actually have anything else I can do because activating my, my speed boots was my bonus action. I oh, just realized. So tight, tight, tight. I am, I am, I am done. So amazing. The burners are going, <laughs> the three of them that remain one going to keep screaming for a second. Uh, the other two finish this spell and you see, uh, kind of, I keep using, uh, that like same like burn, but you see, They walk forward again, and their hands are kind of aflame. It looks like they're going to cast something like burning hands, but all they do is touch the wall of force, and it begins to ignite, but it picks up faster. You feel like the wind around you seems to pick up. It feels dry and hot, very like Southern California fire season, as this entire wall gets uh, effectively disintegrated by this joint spell. The wall of force drops. Not that it means that much now that most of them have walked around to the side. And uh, that's two of the burners turn. And the third one, the one that's screaming and in pain, is going to sprint to you, Davenport, and attempt to attack you. This should be fun. Crap. Uh, misses with the first and a natural 19 on the second. Does now, a 23 now wait. hit. Now, wait. If he rushed, did he get within range? Oh, oh. Shoot. So before he's able to reach Davenport, uh, the wall drops, triggering your attack. Taco. Here it comes, baby. <laughs> Taco raises <laughs> raises the crossbow. <laughs> I want to say the line before I roll because I think it's always better. <laughs> There's nothing funny about a a, a cool guy line at, after the spells already succeeded. Yeah. Uh, so I'm gonna f- raise the crossbow bolt uh, bow to my eye and say. Here's arrow for you, from me to you. Dwing. And he makes the sound of the bow with his <laughs> mouth for some reason. And let's see what we got here. I just clicked the button on here because it makes it easier to. Oh boy, howdy! That's not very it's a good. Three plus nine, a twelve. Wow! 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 <laughs> Does not hit. Would you like to use your inspiration? Yeah, yeah. I'll roll it again. Yeah. I'll, Cause it, yeah, I need that. I need that inspiration. Here we go. I'm gonna pray for you. Five plus nine, fourteen. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And you've got so, bless. Oh crap! What? You do have bless. Add a d4. Okay, so that's two. Sixteen. Just hits. Sixteen is the DC on all of our burners. Yes. Let me roll my damage here. Amazing. It's gonna be like three. Eight. Hey. Plus right. three. Eleven. <laughs> Not bad. Not bad. Wait, it's 11? Uh, yeah. Okay, this guy is barely alive. And uh, he takes the crossbow bolt to the neck and continues uh, screaming as you actually see the bolt begins to get consumed with that same fire. But right. he, he's going to use the last of his strength to lunge and try to tackle Davenport. Uh, and the second one what or- Taco immediately, by the way, turns away, like, hands in the air, like, did you see? With <laughs> a crossbow! Magnus does like a, not yeah. Yeah, I'm an archer now! <laughs> Someone get me a large pet! I'm a, I'm a hunter prowling the woods <laughs> for my prey! I'm a ranger now! <laughs> uh, Davenport. I need a hood! This is the whole I do identity! I need a hood! I'm a ranger! Krav- you hear Kravitz yelling from the back. Stop! bragging there's so many people back here and davenport you get effectively tackled by this slow burner because uh 
wait, sorry, let me double check. Does a 23 hit? You're not going to believe this? It doesn't. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> Crap! It helps to have magical Iron Man armor. I it's hate, pretty close. It's pretty I close, but ding, no, ding, no ding. cigar. Amazing. So this poor boy scrabbles helplessly against your armor uh, and is just going to fall. Yeah. It's okay. It's okay. Just this is sort of sobbing. I know. I know. It's been a long day for all of us. <laughs> He's in full, like, just think of the rabbits, George. Yeah. Here, George. Look like, out over the water. Look out over the water, poor guy. Hold on. <laughs> I will let you as a reaction and this poor boy who has literally two hit points left. Yeah, anybody actually, anybody who ends uh, their action in uh, range of me has to make a strength saving. I can activate this. Make a strength saving throw. Little little friend, a sixteen? Uh, no. Uh, so I I pull him right up into me and uppercut him with my thunder gauntlet. Uh, so that's gonna be a wow, really <laughs> unnecessary display of force. Christ, <laughs> twenty eight. Uh, It'll all be uh, over don't soon. Don't forget your <laughs> glass. <laughs> <laughs> you could have might just slip gently away. <laughs> you could have forehead kissed him to death. Sorry, I had a four with the bless, so that's uh, thirty-two. Does thirty-two? <laughs> yes, Griffin, that hits. Yeah, that kills nice. him and his twin brother, who's that's, uh, uh, that's nine thunder damage. And also, he, if he tries to attack anybody else, uh, he has disadvantage. Okay, yeah. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> I go, I, shh, shh, shh. <laughs> and we all go, it was his time. <laughs> Natural causes. Yeah. Uh, somewhere in the back, even though you can't see the full form of Nikitarnox, you see it kind of shudder uncomfortably with like it's the extraordinary. <laughs> that was really fun. You know, guys, like. <laughs> Look, I'm an untethered trying to erase you from existence, and that was fucked. <laughs> Come on, guys. <laughs> Continue spacing. I point like you're next, even though I have no idea what this thing is, and I'm very scared of it. Make an intimidation check. Oh, that's not gonna go good at all. I'm just a little I'm just a little guy. You're just a little guy in a big suit. Four plus just- zero. Okay. <laughs> no, you know what? I'm gonna use my inspiration. Do it. <laughs> Do it. Uh, nine. <laughs> does, it, does nine do it for you? Um. <laughs> no. no. Bye. Okay. <laughs> it kind of gives you a strange look, and it's caught between. We're gonna follow this up. Give me an insight check. Okay. Because you know you didn't like you didn't cow it, even though it's uncomfortable with what it saw. It's another fucking four plus one Ooh, this what? time though for five. <laughs> Uh, you have no idea what it's fucking thinking, and it's going to continue pacing. We're going to keep going in initiative. Yeah. It would have been weird if I, if I did know what it was thinking. That would have been pretty weird. It would have been pretty wild. You can read it all over its face. It's yeah. hungry. <laughs> Taco, you're up. That was your held action from round one, so right. you're up now. So what do we have now? It's just you got two sack. you got two in front in the front of the house with the wall dropped, and you still got uh, like nine in the back of the house. Dang, just a lot back there. Uh, how's it look? How how like overall? Does it feel like we're like handling this pretty comfortably currently? I mean, there were like twenty something of them six seconds ago, and now there are half of that many. So you're actually doing a very good job. Whatever is on the horizon that you see Davenport's giant Iron Man suit staring at is probably cause for concern. Right, right, right. right, right. Yeah, you probably didn't yeah, need yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Giant, <laughs> yeah. evil, untethered dragon guy. It's not it's just like, like a well, we've just got this corner. one wrapped up. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let me, um, one of the stragglers uh, that's up front, I'm going to shoot him with a crossbow. All right. Make an attack roll for me. Hey! You are fucking kidding me. He really is. It's a natural 20. Plus 9, 29. Crap. Plus 4 from Bless. 33. Plus, there you go. You gotta sure. roll it. You, you don't just roll. get all just, four. Yeah. Just oh, okay, in. yeah. I, I need all of them. Let yeah. me see. 
The DC is 32. That's a so one. We'll That's fair. Okay, so it's 30. <laughs> it's just 30. Doesn't hit. Uh, no, we, we're going to respect the crit rule. Uh, you just describe how you completely murk one of the two left in the front. I'm like, natural. I don't know what to do without magic. And then I put the crossbow for, uh, behind my back and just blast the guy <laughs> right, in his, right in his head. Amazing. Uh, one of these like caster burners like just takes the bolt through the center of his dome and drops immediately. And there's one left in the front. Level 17 is awfully late to dual class, but it really does feel like Taco is, <laughs> is moving in that direction. Well, right? you know what it is? Part of it is like my dexterity scale. Like It's big. You're the flip wizard. Yeah. Taco's dexterity is really high, so it's like, yeah, it's fine. Level 17, I'll just shoot him with a crossbow. Look, that was But that's the implication of a level 17, right? You've lived a full life. <laughs> yeah. Who knows what you had time to explore? You're basically demigods now. This is great. All right. Anything with your bonus action or movement? Um, I am going to rush into the house to see if I have some kind of hood. I feel like I need a hood. So I'm going to rush back into the house to look for a hood. Yeah, it could be an investigation check. Okay. Because Gravitz for sure does the laundry. and like, That's an 18 put it away. plus 523. Oh, yeah. You know uh, you know exactly where where uh, all the, like, mood clothing. What does the hood look like? You have a lady DM now, so fashion is important to me. <laughs> okay. Um, Paint me a word Well, picture. that doesn't make me any more skilled at coming up with it, though, <laughs> uh-uh. Abria. Um, Pressure. The, so it's, like, really dark, dark purple. And it, if you hit it in just the right light, it like glints off with a prismatic sort of shimmer. And he pulls it up far enough so that you can just see two glowing eyes from his elven, you know, heritage. Love that. And it's glowing out. And he, and that's the, the sort of like purple cloak that he's wearing as he strides back out with his arrow. Please Good take news, inspiration. Babe. I'm a ranger. <laughs> <laughs> and you just hear like a slight delay in Kravitz. What? Susan, quick, <laughs> one shot. One shot for the gram. Look, I'm a ranger. And you hear and just I like. I pose in front of the guy I just shot with the arrow in my cloak <laughs> with the bow over. <laughs> and in the caption, make it um, hashtag who needs magic. And then make sure you get the arrow and it's clear I did the arrow. Susan does, in fact, come sprinting back in. Of course she does. Uh, she has, a good she had, like, has, has escaped Susan. Kravitz's grip, uh, comes in, snaps a couple for the gram. On uh, her adventure zone, yeah. On her adventure zone. Uh, and then uh, gets re-scooped up by Kravitz, who's like, just leave, you useless bitch! And carries her back out of the house again to leave, uh, to leave the narrative. This um, time for I, sure. This I time give, for yeah, sure. This time Carol's actually, yeah, Susan's actually done for. Um, I uh, I do want to give a quick award to Travis. I Just the first time I noticed that most distracting uh, drink. We've all been competing for it. I think Travis has, yeah, you has finally gotten it with the most <laughs> sort of visually distracting beverage. I'm a thirsty boy. I, yeah, very thirsty. I like it. Also, okay. uh, you do have inspiration for a very good hood description. Ah, oh, nice. So, you now know how to impress me, boys. Paint me a word picture. <laughs> okay. Uh, Taco, that's you. Merle, you're up. Um, so there's nine in the back? Nine in the back, one in the front. Okay. Are the nine in the As back? I say. <laughs> <laughs> if you know what I mean. <laughs> I don't. Yeah. Perhaps him paling. The shocker is know. different in 2021. <laughs> A super shocker. <laughs> a lot of things have changed in the last two years. A lot to We're shock me now. now. And the nine in the back, are they all, like, fire-based? Uh, I mean, they're all physically burning, yes. These okay. are all, uh, and you even hear a little bit from Kuo, like, yeah, these are all in the thrall of the slow burn. Oh, wait, okay. are we killing innocent people? No. <laughs> oh, okay, they're already good. dead. You're good. These are Marvel rules. Mm-hmm. Faceless hordes. Absolutely good to kill him. Cool. Merle is going to uh, create water um, in a in a big block. He's going to drop this giant cube of water on, just drop it amongst the nine out back. He has to flip through the index in the Extreme Team Bible to find out where uh-huh. it is. 
because he's never tried this before. Respect. Um, and he's out of wine. So, um, so he creates this water up to 10 gallons of clean water within range in an open container or the water falls as rain in a 30 foot cube within range. So you want the rain. Yeah. Yeah. And he is, uh, doing this at, uh, sixth level, casting a sixth <laughs> okay. level spell. At higher levels, when you cast a spell using a spell slot of second level or higher, you create or destroy 10 additional gallons of water. He is dropping 60 gallons of water um, on those nine. It's Amazing. Like not that much water. Like It sounds like a lot of water, but it's really not that much water. It's, not, it's like a large <laughs> fish tank. Sixty. Get You think 60 gallons is a large fish tank? A very large fish tank, yeah. Okay, wise ass. How about this? He does it at ninth level. Oh my god! He does it at ninth oh, level, which you means a, there's like I'm looking at a, some large fish tanks, and most of them are like seventy five yeah. wow. gallons. Like they're Still, not even hold on. That big. If somebody dropped that on you though, Justin. Even without the glass, like, like if you oh, think I'm about bad. a standard barrel, <laughs> that's about sixty gallons. Like you just kind of like. Dumped a barrel of water on him. It's a lot. Didn't you see the ice like a challenge? That shit. No, it hurt. is. If you're trying to prank him, it's very good. It's yeah. a good prank. All right, I'll go back like to trying to prank Merle him. Merle Highchurch. I support. I support your choices. Thank you. I support him Merle too. High Church. Are you using a ninth level no. spell no. slot? No. 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 You, no. you stay with me, sir. Look okay. at me. Are All you right. using a ninth level spell slot to cast a non-violent water-based spell? Trust to Bria. Yes, trust to Bria. Yes. You are, Dad. You yes, are. Yes, I am. Yes. I love this. So as you cast it, I like when you burn something high, this is this feels like a crit. And you are synced up with Coolio right now in a way that would suggest that you have a little extra insight on what's effective and what to do here. So even though that seems weird and bad and maybe everyone else in the party would tell you that's a horrible idea to do, you trust your instincts and you cast the spell. And I say, H2, oh yeah! Look, I was curating a cool moment and you fucking killed it. Boy, I breathe. You knew how many times I wanted to say that to my dad. <laughs> and not just in Adventure Zone, but in life. Not just in, in life. <laughs> yeah. In Every life. birthday party. Every birthday yeah. party. So, Merle, here's what we're going to do. Kua, yeah. what you see is as you are like doing whatever hand motions and like spell components it requires for you to like cast this spell, Kua is doing it with you perfectly in sync behind you as you like face out the back of this house and what you summon is not a cube of rainfall, but like a torrential downpour of rain. You're going to wipe the nine off the board. I want you to describe how it happens and what it looks like. Some fucking water bending. Let's go. Well, it's, it starts off as a gentle rain, more of a mist really, or a heavy fog. But then very rapidly, the drops get big. You know, those great big drops that, you know, make. And then, man, they're just pounding down. I mean, you can't even see on the other side. And this and and it almost looks like a cube of rain. But that would be ridiculous. And it comes down and it just wallops them. And it takes them out like the the Pharaoh's troops at the Red Sea. Just just whams over them, creates two walls of water even that spreads from the outside and it's pretty damn majestic you see that like this water has both sort of physically bludgeoned and also put out the like burning across the slow burns thralls and with that anyone that was still in the front of the house especially Davenport looking out and kind of seeing uh, Nikaranox moving back and forth you see them suddenly like freeze panicked and he gets really low to the ground realizing that only one of his thralls is still uh on the board and you see him turn and begin to sprint galloping on all six legs away back towards the shimmer and merle turns to taco and says yeah that's how you do magic (laughs) 
Does he think I lost the ability to do? I guess he wouldn't have any yeah. context for it. He yeah. must have thought I lost. And, it. Yeah, and also, he is technically correct. That is how you do magic. It's <laughs> a magic. Exactly. And, 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 don't, for, don't forget that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, Merle, is there anything else you want to do, like bonus action or movement? Um, uh, check with Kuyo. Kuo. 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 Checks with Kuo through the mental link. Said, "You okay?" You cool? You didn't get any water on you, did you? I, it's fine if water gets on me. Oh, yeah, I but mean, I mean, you saw a normal bull, person. Kablooey. Oh, not a normal person. Okay. No, he's very, right, not normal. We right. did a good job. Did check, check, check. You, you know that the time Drake is running away, right? Oh, I did that. I chased it away. Oh, <laughs> you think that's a victory? Uh. It's going to go somewhere else in time to try to kill you since it didn't win here. Oh, oops. You're not getting this. And Kuo's going to push you towards the front door. Fucking run! <laughs> right! Yeah. Running! 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 I follow, I follow Merle. Are we still in initiative or are we? Yeah, we'll, we'll drop out of initiative. Uh, there's one burner left, by the way, that looks very abandoned and confused. I'm going to get him. I'm going to get, we just dropped out of initiative. I'm going to get him with a shot as we're running away. <laughs> I love that. I'm not behind making you back. roll for it. Is okay. it behind the back? Just paint behind. me a word picture. <laughs> just like yeah. as we're, as we're sprinting, he just puts his arm behind him and fires off a shot and, and, uh, just hits him in the leg and he like falls over like, this is worse. <laughs> <laughs> Gang Green's definitely going to set in. We don't have advanced right. medicine. <laughs> uh, yeah, so as you guys like sprint in the direction of the heat shimmer, what you actually see is, uh, as <laughs> this last burner is sort of felled and like sits on the ground, like, ah, uh, you see that across the next like minute and a half, uh, the rest of its form is completely consumed and just sort of dissolves down to the crossbow bolt. So these things were never here for a long time. Just a good time. And that's what you see as you sprint towards the heat shimmer. Uh, is there anything else you guys want to do as you're like covering ground? If we were doing this in rounds, you would have a little bit of time to get there. So any it, intel you're trying to get as you go. How, f how far are we from this, this, this shimmer, would you say? Uh, about 50 yards. Can you give me that? If that's what Sorry, 150 <laughs> feet. 150 feet. feet. I don't know why the fuck I decided yards was the. Hey, it's the like juice. three. Griff, but Griffin is like, it's times three. It's times three. It's you're right. You can do times three. Uh, it wasn't like you had to convert it into meters. You're Come right. On, That's still uh, like times three, though. It's like times oh. three. This is this <laughs> shimmer any kind of uh, like spell or anything that I would recognize? Uh, give me an arcana check and I'll give you advantage. Uh, that's a 10 plus 11, 21, and a 9 plus uh, 11, 20. You guys have dealt with a lot of uh, very strange, non-spell-based, like, powerful magic. This is different than you've experienced, but, like, in that it is unique to your experiences, but very familiar in that this is something that, like, tears between not just, like, places in the world and in the universe, but, like, time it treats time like location so uh what you are running toward is this massive like chasm in time that's going to stay relative to this location just appears in front of you as this like heat shimmer that the the time drake has like dug out and you see it kind of like getting towards the edge and like redigging its claws in before it's going to like try to jump back through I want to try something pretty foolhardy, but I feel like Davenport's feeling pretty, pretty, uh, you feeling cocky. spicy. Yeah. I feeling pretty spicy. Love this. Uh, I still got my speed boots on, so I'm, I'm going to try to gain some ground and cast dispel magic on this <gasps> shimmering rift just to like oh. see what happens. I don't know if this will do anything. Any spell of third level or lower on the target ends. Uh, for each spell of fourth level or higher, make an ability check using your spell casting ability. The DC equals 10 plus the spell's level. Uh, so this is not a spell. Okay. But I love a chance for success. Okay. So go ahead. Uh, go ahead and make that ability check for me. All right. And bless doesn't count anymore. Okay. Uh, that's 16 plus my spell casting modifier is plus five so that's a 21 21 will do it what does it look like as davenport uh attempts to disrupt this 
miasma of energy. Uh, I feel so. All the artificer spells are not sort of magic. They are like gadgets. I think this is just like uh, almost a Luigi's Mansion style vacuum that like comes out of the backpack, and it's got a hose. And I try to just suck all of the magic up up into my vacuum cleaner. Griffin, that's a very specific description. You <laughs> stick with it. Yeah, I am. Okay. So what happens as uh, Davenport like summons and gathers this energy and takes it into his own magical ability is that the magic doesn't go away. It's just no longer under the time Drake's control. Uh -oh. And it looks up at you and uh, you get a little bit of that shimmer dropping as you pull the magic away and you see its face it's this massive like red and black like iguana komodo dragon like a very normal lizard looking dragon with two sets of like front legs and a set of powerfully built back legs and like a long mean tail with spines going down from like the top of its head all the way to the tip of its tail and it quirks its eyes and blinks two sets of eyes at you as you take all of that magic away from it. But the magic still hits, and this was a rupture in time. So instead of the time drake getting to decide where you're going to go next, you're going to. So let's play a game, the, f the five of us. Uh, Were we going already doing that? <laughs> what have we been doing this whole time? It's a game. It's within a game within a game. We love it. Oh! <laughs> so we are going to jump back in time to the... We're going to go back to the scene of another triumph. Back when you were younger adventurers, when you were still chasing down Grand Relics, maybe just, just after the suffering game, you had a fight. I want you to tell me the circumstances of it, because you're about to go revisit it and fight in it again. Let's start with you, Davenport. Where was it? Yeah, I mean, when everyone Just else was when everyone else was gathering the grand relics, Davenport was a sort of mindless. I know husk. This is sort of a Griffin describing the thing. Oh, okay. Not, uh, yeah. So you're all going to build this uh, battle that happened, but we never saw in the adventure zone. So are we like quantum leaping into our old forms? Uh, you'll find out in a second. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. <laughs> okay. Okay. So Did, you give I'm me the location. To... I'll get the like other details from other people. I mean, the only thing that happened kind of after Suffering Game was st the day of story and song. So you I feel say like. say that. I am changing the timeline, my guy. Oh, uh, shit. Okay. Welcome to me being in charge. <laughs> <laughs> like, it doesn't have to have, like, dire consequences. This can literally be, like, you, like, go, like, the full, like, like, rogue samurai. Like, at some point, you guys were traveling. You crossed a town. There was, like, a bandit situation, and you helped them out. Like, this doesn't have to be a big thing. Okay. Just at some point, an encounter broke out. Where you were uh, fairly high level, but it's before Endgame. Uh, then it was it was an adventure in which uh, a a ghost ship uh, surfaced and uh, was was sort of terrorizing the seas, uh, and the ghost ship summoned basically the Kraken, uh, and there was okay, a, okay, there was okay. A whole right, big battle. everyone gets to ch 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 oh sorry Travis. sorry no you're good. Travis, add a detail. Um, I am going to say that... Oh, wait, can uh, I change it? Oh, no, shit. I change it. I change it. I change I'll it. I'll allow it. Can it be uh, the Battle Fest, the WrestleMania uh, event that, uh, the, that the heroes had to uh, stop a war god from, from returning? Absolutely. Okay, cool. Perfect. Okay, Travis, add a detail. Um, there was a huge cash prize for, for the Battle Fest uh, that they were playing for. They made it very, very uh, attractive for everyone. Extremely lucrative. Love it. Uh, Justin, there was a point at which 
uh, this could have gone incredibly poorly, but you averted disaster. What went right? Crombo was the big bad guy. And he was about to, um, he had just jumped off the, they have like eight turnbuckles at Battlefest and he jumped off the highest turnbuckle and he he was going to squash everybody. But um, Taco had one spell slot left uh, because he had used all of his other spell slots and he cast Feather Fall on him and just made him fall very slowly. And then they kicked his ass. (laughs) (laughs) Amazing. And, uh, did, was there something else you wanted to add? You had a thought. No, that's it. I just want to make it clear that Taco had used all of his spell slots. So he basically had, like, no magic. Yeah. I love that's how fantastic. into doing magic for this you are. It warms my heart. Oh, I should also say that detail. So the huge cash prize is what Magnus used to start Hammer and Tails. And Merle oh. basically retired with that oh, money. okay. Yeah. And Taco bought his house with. Oh, okay, great. yeah. I love that. All right. And, and you know what? Eventually a portion of it went to Davenport and helped him buy the wave humper. It just it that it was a huge seed money rise. for all of our yeah. retirements. Yeah. Perfect. We invested properly, so yeah, yeah, the yeah, dividends. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And Clint finally. In butt coin, which was like the coin <laughs> but in the Avengers of Cell World. Awesome. I hate that I have to write butt coin down. It's like you money. You do not hate coin. that. You don't have to. It's not canon. I got it is canon. It's we invested canon in butt now. coin. You hate to see it, but there it is. Uh, and Clint, finally. A uh, there was one regret, one thing that sort of slipped between the cracks, an acceptable loss on this victory. What was it? At one point, Merle's tights split open mm-hmm. and everybody could, everybody could see his, his rear Don't end. say butt. And it was, oh. No, they saw his butt. <laughs> Abri, is that the fucking dramatic stakes you're hoping to work with? I yeah. uh, don't exactly know what, what I expected. For. Yeah. And, and you've learned an important lesson here as a DM for the Mac race. Don't let dad go last. And, <laughs> and you need somebody to swoop behind him like and, all, and that was the butt that started a war that people cared about. Yeah. And it ruined his confidence and, and he was be, developed terrific stage fright. Yeah, that's great. Okay. Good, I'm yeah, writing yeah, yeah. that part down too. Thank you. So, uh, as Davenport like sucks up this time magic, uh, you see a bunch of possibilities flit before your eyes. And Davenport, so much of this has circled around events that you were tied to, but but that you missed out on, that you were held back from for so many reasons. Uh, a lot of which your fantasy therapist would love to unpack in the future. But you remembered hearing a story of a, of a massive, like, wrestling uh, situation. And in that little spark of thought, all of you are dragged there. And that's where we're going to pick up next time. Yeah. Bra, bra, bra. Okay, let's. Dad, yeah. you gotta get off the call because we got. We need to talk about this. Nine in the back is a lot, but it, what's almost more ridiculous is that you have just one in the front. Just to what remind is- you.